welcome to another video. Thanks for stopping by on my channel. Um, if you like my videos, remember to subscribe and um, click the thumbs up to like the video. Uh, if there's anything that you think could be done a bit better, then uh, please remember to leave a comment down below and I will try and get back to you. Uh, so this video, a little bit different, not my normal vlog this month. I've started fishing a new water and um, I've, as you've seen in my previous videos, I've been fishing the day ticket close to home, but decided to give that lake a rest for a while because um, the fish have heavily spawned out and uh, they're all a bit down in weight. So fancy to change and somewhere new. Uh, so as I've started on a new lake, I thought it would be a good time to put a video together of my thought process when approaching new waters um, and the steps I take to kind of hopefully get some success when I start somewhere new. So. So this video is, is going to be 10 tips to approaching new waters. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one. Tip one is do your homework. Uh, before you even fish a lake, it's worth having a look online. Um, Facebook's a useful tool. There's lots of forums and things that sometimes have discussions about certain lakes. Um, and also Google Maps, you get an aerial view of a lake so you can work out things such as wind direction, you know, which way the southwesterly is going to be blowing, that sort of thing. Uh, and if the water's clear, sometimes you can see the lake contours as well. So definitely check out Google Maps and forums and things. And also weather apps. Um, I use NetWeather myself. There's lots of other ones out there. XC Weather's a good one. But just keep an eye on the weather before you start your first session, you know, check for weather changes, particularly drops in pressure, increases in the wind, warmer temperatures in the winter, that sort of thing. So you can plan your first session around these and uh, give yourself a bit more confidence that you're fishing at the best possible time. I also like to walk around the lake at, in different conditions to try and find the fish and see how they react to the weather and uh, pressure and wind etc. Um, so that you know roughly where to expect the fish to be when you arrive at the lake. Although you can never rely on this and you should always have a walk around anyway when you get there. But it does give you a rough idea. I like to write everything down in a notebook as well, just so that I don't forget anything and I can always refer to it in the future. Also when walking around the lake, it's good to chat to other anglers, you know, if people are willing to talk to you. Um, you can pick up all sorts of information and it can help you narrow down where you're going to start your campaign and occasionally trickle in a little bit of bait. Also a good idea just to give you confidence um, that the fish have been eating whilst you're not here and hopefully then you can you know, catch a fish a little bit quicker when you do actually end up fishing. Um, also chatting to other anglers will help you ascertain where the snags are in the lake and that sort of thing. Uh, the new lake that I've started fishing is particularly snaggy. A lot of the swims have snags close in, like barbed wire, etc. And it's not really great if you're trying to land a fish and you've got a load of barbed wire in front of you. So it's worth talking to other people so you can gauge the sort of safer swims to fish, if you like, or try and get a different angle to these areas where the fish are so you can hopefully land a fish more safely. Um, I like to also keep an eye on the bird life when I start a new lake so when I'm walking around I'll, I'll make a mental note what sort of birds are living in the lake so you can be prepared for that you know if you've got coots and stuff you might not necessarily want to be fishing the shallower areas where the coots can easily access so possibly looking for deeper holes and things um, and also things like swans can be a bit of a pain if they can reach your baits so um, yeah it's worth worth looking at bird life as well but also the bird life can kind of work to your advantage and they can give away where the fish are um, especially in the winter I think the fish tend to follow the birds a little bit because the um, you know their the natural poo going in the lake is a bit of a food source for them and also the birds uh, like to find the warmer areas of the lake um, and the fish will quite often be in those areas so the birds can kind of give away um, where the carp might be so definitely don't ignore the bird life so yeah, tip number one is do your homework. Tip number two is to record the distances to your spots that you're going to be fishing. So when you turn up at the lake, you have a walk around and try and find the fish and then decide on a likely looking area that you're going to cast to. 
and once you've cast out I like to clip up and mark the line with a bit of marker elastic and also wrap it around some distance sticks and record in my notebook how many wraps it is to those spots so that every time I come fishing after that I can get to that same spot in one cast basically you know I can just wrap up get the same amount of wraps uh, mark the line and, and clip up and cast out so that way as you fish the lake a few times you kind of build up a picture of the swims and eventually you pretty much know every single swim and uh, the spots in each swim so you never need to disturb the water with too many casts trying to reach where you're going to fish so tip number two is to record how many wraps it is to the spots tip number three is to have a marker float or leading session um, this is a day when you come to the lake and you're not actually fishing but you walk around every swim and find the spots and different depths and contours of the lake and any features that are out there and you bring your distance sticks and you find these spots and you wrap up and you write down in your book how many wraps it is to these spots um, and you can build up a bit of a map of the contours of the lake bed uh, and so you know you can kind of predict a good area for the conditions so say in the winter you might want a slightly deeper area or an area that gets hit by the sunlight that's a little bit shallower you know so um, a day with a marker rod or a leading rod is absolutely invaluable uh, when it comes to building up a picture of the lake so tip number three is have a marker float and leading session when you're not actually fishing Tip number four is to wear Polaroid sunglasses and to take binoculars with you when you're walking around the lake and also when you're fishing. There's no good having to walk around looking for fish if you can't actually see what's in the water and quite often um, it can be the difference between finding the fish and not finding the fish. I find binoculars are very useful also when you're actually fishing to um, keep an eye on other areas of the lake that you can't really see with your naked eye. Um, sometimes there might be a bit of fizzing or fish showing and you want to check that it's actually a carp and not a bream or a pike or something like that and uh, binoculars can help you confirm that it is a carp so you don't waste your time moving um, when the fish isn't what you're after so so yeah tip number four is wear Polaroid sunglasses and take binoculars with you when you're fishing tip number five is always watch the water whether this is when you're walking around and chatting to people before you actually start your fishing um, or whether you know when you're actually fishing but always keep an eye on the lake um, don't just sit in your bivy on your phone or whatever you know watch the water particularly at certain times of day when the fish are likely to be showing you know early mornings and late evenings and things like this it can help you build up a picture of where the fish like to be at certain times of day and it can sort of give you something to go on for your next session even if you don't move for this session um, you know you sort of you need to build up the picture of where the fish like to hang out because quite often they're habitual creatures and they will sort of follow certain patterns so so tip number five is always watch the water tip number six is always fish for a bite at a time when you first start on a new lake there's no point turning up and filling it in with loads and loads of bait um, just to find that you're in the wrong area or to find that the fish don't particularly respond to that tactic on, on your chosen lake um, generally I find that 15 to 20 or so baits around each rod is enough to tempt a bite and, um, and then if you do start catching you can always top it up but there's literally no point coming and putting 3 or 4 kilos out and hoping for the best because generally you find that the fish won't eat that straight away and uh, they can be a little bit spooked off by the added pressure of, of a lot of bait in an area so, so yeah tip number 6 is to fish for a bite at a time Tip number seven is related to your chosen tactics. If you've got a tactic that works for you on other waters, whether it's boilies only or pellets and chops or you know particles or whatever, um, if that works for you on another lake, chances are it'll work for you on a new lake. So my starting point would always be something that I'm confident in um, and concentrate more on my location and and the watercraft rather than my actual tactics because I know my tactics work there's no point chopping and changing and if you're not catching it's not necessarily down to your tactics it might just be that you haven't found the fish yet so tip number seven is stick to tactics that you're confident with
Tip number eight is to work out the practicalities of each swim. What I mean by this is try to work out whether you think it's safe to try and land a fish from this swim or not. Some some swims might have overhanging trees and you know trees that are encroaching into the water in front of you and if you hook a fish out in open water and it could kite round past these trees and very easily get snagged up and be dangerous for the fish. So, so if you look at each swim and try and assess whether it's safe to um, to fish there or not, and if it's an area you think there might be fish and you can access it from a different swim that would be more safe, then that's probably a good idea to do so. So tip number eight is to always assess the practicalities and safety of each swim for the fish. Tip number nine is to know the rules for your new lake. Um, you don't want to get caught out by a bailiff coming round and, and checking your rigs and get kicked off the lake before you've even started. So always go on the website or speak to the bailiff, speak to the lake owners, find out the rules, find out whether you're allowed leaders, whether you're allowed barbed hooks and what baits are banned such as nuts etc, whether you can use a bait boat, all these sorts of things uh, and it will help your time be a lot more enjoyable on your new water so you don't end up you know, getting into trouble and uh, falling out with anyone. So, so tip number nine is to always know the rules of your chosen lake. Finally, tip number ten, and it goes against what I've said earlier about using tactics that you're confident in. Tip number ten is don't be afraid to experiment a little. If you've um, gone to your new lake and you've tried out your, your confidence tactics, whether that be a pop-up over a scat and laboratories or a snowman with a bit of a spod mix or something um, and that hasn't worked for you don't be afraid to experiment because you might find a tactic that that really pays off for you so if after a few sessions you're not catching and you think you've been on the fish and uh, you think the fish have been feeding maybe try a different tactic that you haven't tried before maybe if you normally fish boilies um, with a stringer maybe try a solid bag or something um, if you normally fish a snowman, maybe try a pop-up or vice versa. Um, and this can sometimes really pay off for you. Uh, and also, experiment with colours of your bait. Um, I tend to prefer yellow or pink or white, but some lakes respond really well to orange um, and even dark coloured baits or, or matching hatch, you know, something that matches your freebies can be a, a winning tactic. So, tip number 10, is don't be afraid to experiment.